The SK Telecom T1 battle continues. With Fantasy looking pretty darn good in that first set. Um, about as well as he's played the rest of the OSL. His play has never really dropped off in quality in this tournament. But Sue is no stranger to this stage of a tournament. He's made it up to the semi-finals before, back when he's a Royal Rotor. So he's just got to focus. I'm sure the nerves won't be that big of a problem, as it is for most new players. But here we go. Except Sue's not a new player anymore. He's not new Sue. New Moo. But okay, up at the 2 o'clock position in green is Fantasy. Down at the 5 o'clock in red is Sue. Let's get some predictions. I only got one red in the last set. Got a quite a few to get through here. Alright. Here's one from Domo Kun Dome. Right? Fantasy. Will. Dominate. Nice simple prediction. I always love those. Here's another one from Sotero Lupus Sotero. Writes. Fantasy will do his trademark, the everything build, and will meet up with Flash in the semis, where Flash will do the fantasy build with Valkyries. It's going to be so crazy, smiley face. Hope they will have epic SC2 battles in the future. Dot dot dot. Here's another one from KJUSE931, I think. K-A-J-U-S-Z-931, writes. I predict that Fantasy crushes Sue with pure vultures, and then goes on to destroy Flash in an epic TBT with pure wraiths. Pure vultures and the pure wraiths. Another one from uh, Tilimp or Tilimpe. I never know how to pronounce any of these usernames because uh, some of them come from. I think they stem from languages that I don't know. All right. T e l i m p e writes. Some very talented players in the bunch, granted, but Sue has chicks with him. Chicks. Man, that tells a lot. I would normally cheer for fantasy, but against such a display of coolitude, there is nothing to be done. Yes, that is a reference to me putting the picture of Sue on the beach next to attractive women on the beach when I think SK Telecom T1 was vacationing in Hawaii. Awesome. I couldn't resist putting that up there. Alright, I saw that Fantasy was building his refinery already, which means craziness is on the way. And he's building his barracks inside of the main. Already got the three SCVs on the refinery, too. So ridiculous nonsense coming up for Fantasy. He's going to get to his factory as quickly as he possibly can. Yeah, building the barracks this close. Uh, that nice snappy factory from Fantasy. Building that already. So he's definitely starting it off with some vulture harassment. But where he branches off from there is always anyone's guess. I mean, it's fantasy, for God's sake. Fantasy. You remember the Bot 2 OSL finals? I sure do. Where every single set, fantasy did something ludicrous. And his teammates are discussing it in the audience right now. There's Paralyze. Paralyze! <laughs> Never thought I'd be able to do that voice again. But there it was. <laughs> Spawning pull up now from Sue. And he's got to prepare for some ridiculous nonsense. He's morphing the lair, but he might end up putting down the Hydralis Den first. If he's dealing with a mech opening or some kind of ridiculous vulture opening, he hasn't scouted it yet, but he can pretty much assume since it's fantasy. But once he scouts that, he might put down the Hydralis Den and start uh, preparing. Ooh, two port wraith! Two-port Wraith opening from Fantasy. He's done this several times in the past, including in the Batu OSL Finals that I just mentioned. Uh, against Jadong, he did that in the fourth set, pretty sure. Yeah, definitely was on a blue map, so that's probably the fourth set. <laughs> and not uh, the Medusa, Medusa in the first or last sets. But uh, Fantasy, gonna have a pretty tough time fitting off against this uh, Zergling. Um, <laughs> onslaught. Of course, he has his Vulture and his Epic Vulture Micro, so he will probably be able to defend against this, at least until Sue gets some Zergling speed going. As soon as he gets Zergling speed, if he is researching that, he'll be able to run by and snipe the Vulture. As long as the Vulture doesn't have Vulture speed, which a fancy will probably get to as quickly as he can, but there's Sue moving up. He saw the vulture, but he hasn't seen much else. He sees two vultures now, and he has speed, so he's going to be able to surround the vulture. There's some nice micro from Sue. Takes out one of the vultures, but he's got to keep those zerglings safe. Make sure he can surround the vultures, take them out. 
go. He takes out the second vulture. No doubt a third on the way. But he's making his way inside here with Zerklings only. Going to try to focus in and kill the SCVs. And he's already moving out with tons more Zerglings. So he might be able to finish this with Zerglings as long as he keeps the vultures at bay. But they're the wraiths coming out of the starports. No control tower yet for Fantasy, he's just focusing on getting out as many units as he can because he, right now he's being just focused down by Zerglings but still some pretty good Vulture Micro from him and using the SCVs to block for the Vultures and now he's harassing with the race. Now I'm not sure what Sue has going, he has the Spire going see the Observer's just now focusing on that so he's uh, focusing on the Spire instead of using Hydralis to defend against Wraiths. He's going to try to use Mutas to do this, which will be pretty difficult, but it'll give him a lot more maneuverability if he can micro his Mutas correctly against these Wraiths. But uh, Fantasy is still doing really good micro uh, to kill the rest of the Zerglings inside of his base. Some excellent micro from both, actually. Some great micro earlier from Sue, and he's still in there with Zerglings being forced out now uh, because of the Wraith threat that's in the air. I mean, okay, Lee Fantasy got some drone kills, but the observers were kind of focused on Fantasy's base as he was fighting back the Zerglings. And now they're probably going to be focused on his base again because mutas are incoming. Fantasy building his turrets. Yeah, this reminds me a lot of the Batu OSL game versus Jadon. And Jadon crushed Fantasy in that game. That's when Jadon was making his. That's when he was rallying in the game, starting to figure out that Fantasy was going to do nothing but ridiculous strats. Uh, <laughs> that he could uh, pretty much focus down with a small amount of units in the right micro which is what Sue was going to try to do here is trying to micro against these wraiths and mutas are much better than wraiths much more powerful they get the splash and everything but it is tough to deal with wraiths once they get cloak uh, I mean luckily for Sue I didn't see a control tower on either of fantasy starports uh, so he probably won't have to deal with Cloak for a while. Y yeah, no control tower on the starports yet. Uh, so Sue just got to use that Muta Micro, uh, focus down the Wraiths, keep the Wraith count low uh, for now, and just keep on this aggression. He's moving in with Zerglings at the same time to break through the front. Uh, yeah, if he can break that hard wall in uh, on top of the choke, if he can find some way to break that and flood in with Zerglings, he could definitely take this game. Because this kind of a build... Um, from a Terran just hangs on a freaking thread, man. A very, very fragile build, which can get taken down immediately. Yeah, yeah, you can see Fantasy repairing his wraiths, make, making sure they're all healthy for the next battle. Um, control tower now being built on the starport, I see that there, yes. So Fantasy is working on Cloak. And once he has Cloak, that'll open up quite a few more options for him. He won't have to play completely defensively. Uh, after that, he's moving out a bit with the Wraiths, uh, but for now, the Wraiths are the vulnerable unit. You see the, yeah, the Yuta's chasing down the Wraiths. Wraiths are, are called paper airplanes in Korea because of how freaking fragile they are. Uh, very powerful in a group. Uh, when microed around, nice quick unit, microed around like this, fantasy, trying to stay out of the Muta range, but still get a few pot shots in. Uh, but they are so, so fragile. And there's Cloak Research going now for Fantasy. The choke is broken, uh, the wall is broken now. So if Sue does have some Zerglings, he can... This is a good opportunity to run those in. Uh, try to cause some extra damage uh, before the Cloak kicks in. Because once the Cloak kicks in, then it becomes a little bit more difficult for the Zerg player. But still also pretty difficult for the Terran. Because it's just super micro-intensive. You gotta focus everything on micro when you're using a wraith build <laughs> like this and using the cloak and everything to kill overlords and keep away the detection. Because with overlords in, yeah, Sue has some overlords working up to this position and working on overlord speed, which I'm sure he's doing. Uh, seeing the two port wraith opening like this, you should automatically go for overlord speed um, and get those overlords up, fight back the cloak. Megum Sue almost taking down the barracks, which did pump out a few more marines, just to get a little bit of extra anti-air for fantasy, because he doesn't have much at all. Just has the wraiths. Yeah, three 
um, a four marines hanging by the turn. There's a cloak for fantasy chasing away the mutas now. Mutas falling back to the overlord, but uh, still slow overlords. Still no speed upgrade for the overlords, so one sniped immediately there. And now fantasy is probably feeling much, much more comfortable in the game because he can just skirt around uh, with these cloaked wraiths. Yeah, he's already on the offensive now, moving down to Sue's base. So Sue has to group up and protect his drones now. His economy's number one priority. He's only on the two bases at the moment. And uh, yeah, wraith harassment can be so freaking devastating. Um, oh, third base coming up now for Sue at the 9 o'clock position. A uh, very sneaky location for, for the third base. Fancy will probably scan down at the 8 o'clock position looking for the next base, so... Might not find that for a while. Uh, the Overlord speed is up now, so Sue is moving up to Fantasy's base. Fantasy's still just hanging inside his main, getting up additional barracks. So yeah, just trying to get as much as he could possibly do off of one base. A lot of mutas moving up to this location. So with the right micro, Sue could definitely crush Fantasy here. He just needs to keep in the overlords and uh, keep on that detection. As long as the overlords don't go down, uh, and Sue has the right Muta Micro, of course. He could definitely shut down Fantasy right here, but Fantasy's working on a pretty substantial Marine army. I don't think he has any medics yet uh, to help out the Marines. <laughs> He's just focusing so much else on the wraiths and everything off this just one base. But here comes Fantasy trying to move down and get a bit of vulture harassment, being shut down pretty quickly by the Mutas that intercepted that. And the Observer's looking at the sneaky third base over at the 9 o'clock, which is just starting to mine, uh, getting up some drones at that location. So, uh, Fancy probably won't find that for a while. So, Sue is staying in the air with his mutas. He got about four or five or six overlords uh, moving up to get the detection. As long as he stays by the overlords, he should be okay. Yeah, there's Sue trying to find an opportunity, and he's, I think he's using his zerglings to scout, trying to figure out where those wraiths are at all times. But this is, this is going to be increasingly difficult for Sue um, as Fantasy gets up his Medica Marine army. He's already got two medics with the Marines, which is just going to create a great anti-air onslaught, but no Overlords were in at all during that attack. And I think it was a little bit of Miss Micro from Sue as well with his Butas, because I don't, I don't even think he landed one shot. Uh, even with the Cloak of the Wraiths, he didn't even land um, any powerful shots on the Medic Marines either. Medic Marines fending back the Mutas, Mutas being shot at by the Wraiths as well. And finally the Overlords coming into the vicinity. But yeah, Sue is backing off because of the Medic Marine threat on the ground. <laughs> so the Medic Marines protecting the Wraiths as the Overlords are coming in to detect them. So Fancy is kind of doing a death march down to this natural expansion. But he's still only on one base. Uh, Sue. Yeah, if he builds static defense and holds, he would be okay in this game. Fantasy has a horrible economy. He's just focusing on the one basing this thing all the way to Sue's natural. So what Sue has to do is defend. He's on three bases. He has that hidden third, which is getting him the gas he needs to keep pumping mutas. But he has to defend. He has one sunken colony, but that's not going to be nearly enough to fight back all these Medica Marines. Because the mutas will be needed to kill the wraiths. So he's got to keep on the static defense. Um, yeah, he has one drone kind of prepared to build another sunken colony. Uh, getting another sunken colony going, but he needs that static defense desperately. He has some great micro from Fantasy, just f killing all of the mutilus he can. Uh, but Sue is pumping from three hatches. You're going to uh, fantasies breaking through, trying to kill all of the sunken colonies. Sue not prepared here, though. They forced back by the Medica Marines and the Wraiths, teaming up to just break through the front door. GG from Sue. Man, that was a frustrating game to watch. Sue definitely had a lot of opportunities there to uh, kind of break down Fantasy's build. But now Sue's down two. Let's move on to the third set.